By now, Itadori could remember the way there. The sun was still up, so the atmosphere in the streets felt different than before. A modest amount of traffic was out, and he could see a few people taking out the trash, taking shopping trips, and standing around chatting. This was likely the perfect time. In front of Kyrie Minato's house, he found someone who appeared to be the boy's mother. Are you a friend of Kyrie's? She asked. Yeah, sorta. Even though we're different ages. She might have been over 40, but she looked younger at first glance. Itadori could sense her kindness from the way that she had asked if he was Kyrie's friend, despite the fact that Itadori was clearly a high school student. The curse didn't appear to be bothering the woman. She probably wasn't even aware that she was living in a house where a demon appeared. She looked pleased just to be speaking of Kyrie. That alone conveyed her gentle nature and her love for the boy. That's why it hurt Itadori to ask this. So Kyrie hasn't come home yet? No, she frowned sadly, but her attitude remained calm. Perhaps the woman was prepared for that topic of conversation. He does come home. It's embarrassing to admit this, but my husband and I don't know when. After we started turning off the lights early, though, he started sneaking in sometime before 10 o'clock. Isn't that dangerous? He's still in junior high, right? Yes, that's right. There was a time when I thought I should go find him and drag him home, but... <sighs> Isn't it awful? I have no right to call myself a mother, the woman said forlornly. No, I didn't mean that. The woman's expression was so sad it hurt Itadori to see it. It wasn't responsible for a parent to allow a child to walk around at night. She must have blamed herself for his absence. Itadori could see the sorrow and fatigue in her eyes. I'm not here to criticize her. Itadori reevaluated his position and purpose. Um, may I ask you something unusual? Do you know anything about a demon? A demon? For a moment, the woman's eyes registered surprise, but they weren't as confused as Itadori had expected. On the contrary, she embraced the topic with surprising ease. Did you hear about that from Kyrie? Yeah. The demon has a kind of fairy tale, his grandmother told him. Or rather, a kind of warning fable. She said a demon would show up where bad children are. I suppose it's like a Namahage demon. Oh, the cool grandma? Itadori said, remembering. Right, right, I should have known that he would tell you about her. The woman laughed with a smile both amused and desolate. Something about her sad expression caught Itadori's attention. Kyrie must have really loved his grandmother. Yeah, he did. From his point of view, she was like a replacement for his mother. He's been struggling ever since losing her. A replacement for his mother? Yes, the woman said. His mother died in an accident soon after he was born. Hold on a second, then who are you? All right, that was section five of chapter five, Illusory Trek to the Guardian Demon. Very quick little section, very quick. Um, A couple of generalities about the chapter first, and then we're going to have a history lesson. Um, I thought the fact that Yuji took off from Gojo's office or wherever Gojo was laying around and went straight to Kairi's house and remembered where it was is such such a callback to Yuji remembering everybody's face. Like the girl in the coffee shop in the chapter extra. What was her name? Yuko. He automatically remembered her, even though she'd changed so much. He doesn't remember Amai, which is odd but Amai changed inside so maybe Yuji didn't recognize his soul you know what I mean anyway that's that we'll figure out who this woman is in the next section I'm just gonna leave it ambiguous and try to stay away from spoilers and get into the history lesson all right so woman mystery woman a <laughs> we shall call her brought up a a beast of lore. She brought up the word Namahage. So I looked it up, and like she said, it's it's kind of like a warning tale a little bit. Um, it's Japan's terrifying child-snatching demon, which I will predicate by bringing up a little bit about the land itself. And I said that this is going to be a history lesson, but it's also going to be a little bit of a geology lesson because the area that this lore is from the Oda Peninsula, and it's in the Akita Prefecture. So the Oda Peninsula is actually historically where the land bridge once was that connected Japan to the mainland of China and Asia. And that is, that's like the last exposed piece of it. Um, That's the Oda Peninsula. So it's history says it goes back 40 million years. So there's a little bit of a timeline on that for you. Now, back to the Namehage. The stories of the Namehage went a little bit like this. 
Legend has it that Namehage were brought to Japan by the Han Emperor of China over 2,000 years ago. Now, what else was brought over from China 2,000 years ago? Buddhism? Kinjaku? Sukuna? Tengen? Curses? Something happened 2,000 years ago. But the Oni also did things like steal crops and kidnap and kill young children and women. And the villagers, in order to drive the Oni out of the area, hatched a plan. They promised to give up all the young women in the village to the Oni at once if they could build a massive staircase to the heavens overnight. But if they failed, they would have to agree to leave Oga for good. The creatures agreed, and just before the staircase was completed, one of the villagers imitated the sound of a rooster's crow, tricking the Namehage into believing that morning had come and that they had failed to complete their task. The Namehage left Oga, never to be seen again, except on New Year's, or so the children of Oga believe. Yuji's a cog in the clock. I'll leave y'all to infer the rest. I'll see you in the next one.